Good morning. Welcome back to another vlog. It is Tuesday morning, which is basically hairstylist Monday. I am getting ready to go to the salon. It's a weird day today. <laughs> it is raining and super dark out. I was supposed to have a full day, three clients back to back, and then my second one called the salon to say that she has a fever. I hope that she feels better and is fine. Now I have a three and a half hour gap between my first client and my last one. Front desk, she was gonna see if my last client could move up. My first client is one of my regulars and I actually have really been looking forward to seeing her because if you've been keeping up with my vlogs and Instagram and stuff, you know that I'm getting a salon suite in a few weeks and this client that I have this morning is an esthetician and she is actually the one who was really encouraging me and like gave me the info in the first place about these suites she is getting one there as well so I'm really excited it's gonna be the first time I'm seeing her in person since I signed everything and like made the decision to do it I'm gonna get dressed I decided I'm just gonna go make up free I did a little bit of brow gel and some skincare but especially since it's raining I just can't even be bothered so yeah I'm gonna go get dressed and I'll show you my outfit I love this outfit so much. So I'm wearing these white cowboy boots from Altered State. The skirt is from H&M. It comes up higher on one side. It's like angled at the bottom, which I love because it shows a little more of the boot on one side. And then this top is also H&M. This is like my favorite type of outfit because I feel like cute and stylish, but it's easy at the same time and really comfy. And oh, what I need, oh, my ring. Let me know if you guys would like a separate video about the ring and like updates on it and everything because I know I've gotten a few Instagram DMs asking me to share more about it but this is the ultra human smart ring so it's like the aura ring if you're familiar with that but it's just like a more affordable option but you get all the same insights and i've had it now for just about six months almost and i love it but the last couple weeks it died the one day i forgot to charge it normally i only have to charge it once a week and i will usually just let it charge overnight but I think I forgot to do that so it was dead in the morning so I just left it to charge during the day and then I just kept forgetting to put it back on and then I just got out of the habit of having it and I think I've just like been so busy and I, my mind has been all over the place that like focusing on my health has fallen to the back burner which is not good but like gotta put it back on today and i'm gonna get back into the habit of wearing it all the time but i love this thing it just gives you so many insights to your activity level your body's energy levels your sleep your rest if i'm having a weird day where like my energy is just feeling really low i will open up the app and it will tell me oh you probably are feeling tired today need a little extra rest or take it easy and it will tell me why i'm feeling the way i'm feeling which is so helpful and i can track my cycle with it i will have a link and a discount code in the description if you want to check it out but like i said let me know if you would want a separate video. I can go into more detail about the pros and cons and what I like and everything. Cause I have a couple friends that have the Aura ring, which is basically the same thing. It's just more expensive. And um, we've kind of like compared and contrasted them. And personally, I would just go with this one for the price and for the actual comfort of wearing it. So I'm just doing these. Anna Luisa Hoops and then Ambry Saffron Perfume from Dossier, which by the way, I saw that they now have a reed diffuser in the Ambry Saffron scent and you know I ordered it immediately and I am so excited. I love this perfume. I have been wearing this, like so occasionally I'll switch it up, but for the most part, this has been my go-to scent for like three years now. It is a replica of the Baccarat Rouge 540 perfume, which is insanely expensive, but this one from Dossier is $49, so it is a fraction of the price. When I tell you, I get complimented every single day that I wear this. 
and it lasts all day long it is so potent and it just smells so good it's such a unique scent you are getting the same exact thing as the original it's just in simpler packaging so it costs a lot less money i just love them i love that they make luxury fragrance accessible and affordable and i love that they have their home scents now too their candles which are amazing they're huge and they last so long thank you so much dossier for sponsoring a portion of this vlog they've been supporting my channel for a long time and i really really appreciate it so i'll have a link and a discount code in the description if you want to check them out Anyway, I am going to head to the salon. Hopefully it all goes smoothly. I've been kind of itching to walk around in Target. So if I do end up with that huge gap in the middle, I'll probably just go kill some time in Target and then maybe come back home and have lunch or something. You know, like we'll, we will make the most of our time no matter what. I forgot to get a little clip of my first client's hair, but we didn't do anything exciting. She gets like a few strands of grays. So I literally just pick through her hair and like tap over the gray strands. Like I said, she is going to also have a suite in the same building as me. And she was so excited for me. Like we were just talking and talking and talking the whole time. And it was just so good to see her and it's so exciting to think that the next time I do her hair will be in my suite. I went to Target and walked around and it was so nice. And my last client ended up texting me back. She said she can come a little bit earlier. So I have like 30 minutes before she gets here. So that's good. I have a little bit of time. I don't have to rush. But I saw this dress and I was like, oh my God, I need to have it. And they literally only had one left in the store and it was my size. I was so excited. But I saw something that was a very similar style with the lace and like same kind of cut at a boutique. And I wanted to get it so badly, but it was like $80. And I was like, uh, I don't know if it's worth it. Like the material doesn't really feel worth it. But this was $35, which is not too bad. And I have a bunch of weddings coming up this fall and I've been trying to figure out what I want to wear to them and I think this is going to be perfect for one in particular and it's one of those dresses I feel like you could dress it up or down and I could get so much use out of it and then I loved this top so simple but like I don't know it just felt kind of vintage to me like it just reminded me of something that I would find in a thrift store or like in my mom's closet and then i loved that denim corset top so much but they only had one left of that too and the one i had tried on was a large and it fit okay but it felt a little bit loose i feel like a medium would just fit better because i feel like a corset like it's supposed to be fitted you don't want it to be loose and it like i had some gapping on the sides so they didn't have any more in store but i found it online so i just ordered it in a medium and then i saw this strapless shirt that has a little shelf bra built in for only eight dollars hopefully this will fit okay i didn't end up trying this on because i just saw it as i was about to go to the checkout i feel like a top like that you cannot go wrong you can wear it so many different ways it's going to be such a good basic for summer so that's what i got at target and then i got myself some starbucks as a little treat because in the app they had a little happy hour special buy one get one free so i was like oh hell yeah so i'm just gonna get two smalls i never get starbucks anymore because it's getting ridiculously expensive and i feel like the drinks just aren't as good as they used to be 
like they used to always hit and be so strong and good and i feel like the last bunch of times i've gotten starbucks it's been like super milky and like kind of watered down and just not good and i'm like what are you paying like you're paying like almost seven dollars for a large drink and it's not even strong like what is the point just doing a little skincare the last couple nights i have been sleeping with the air conditioner blasting but then i wake up in the morning and my skin feels so dry nothing that some nivea cream can't fix so i got nivea cream some spf and some vitamin c eye cream i think i might go makeup free again i was literally about to do a full face of makeup but now looking at my face in the viewfinder i'm like i'm kind of just feeling the bare face i think i'm gonna just do maybe a tiny bit of under eye concealer and some brows i'm wearing that new tube top that i got from target yesterday if it's perfectly it's so comfortable and it feels nice and secure the shelf bra is nice it's like a nice thick enough material that i don't need to also wear nipple covers with it you know especially for eight bucks 10 out of 10 like it's good quality love it but today i am getting my hair done i decided i'm gonna go lighter because i've really been liking these lighter pieces and for summer like i don't know i just feel like lighter hair just always softens up my look and I feel like it just always makes me look like more youthful and you know after the copper I was debating do I want to just go dark again or like a chocolatey brown or something like that or do I want to go lighter and I figure you know I already bleached my hair during the process of going copper and then now I did like my little balayage kind of thing so i already have the lighter pieces i may as well just keep going in that direction and i feel like when my hair was really long and i was trying to grow it i was trying to do as little as possible with the color and just like avoid bleach and all that kind of stuff because i didn't want to risk any damage but like now that it's short again i really don't care like even if it gets damaged and i have to chop it a few more inches like once it's short i'm just like mm, whatever it is what it is it's already short you know what i mean so my co-workers doing my hair for me let me show you my inspo pick so i love this i love the tone of the blonde and i love how the roots come up pretty high but they're, it's still rooted and blended and soft. I like this as well. I always suggest when you're looking for inspiration pictures, get a few that are like all within the same family of what you like. Keep in mind too that like the tone that you're seeing is going to vary depending on like the person's skin tone. So it might look a little bit different on you. So don't get like so fixated on like wanting your hair to look exactly like a picture because that's just not realistic for a million different reasons but get like a mood board of what you're going for to give your stylist an idea and talk about like the specifics which a good stylist will know during the consultation to ask these questions but just in case sometimes i have days where i'm like so flustered and overstimulated that like i will even forget or kind of like skim over things during the consultation so you know it happens but be like diligent as the client point out like i said with the root like okay i really like how the root is like that i like the tone i don't necessarily like i do want a money piece but hers is like very thick and bold i don't necessarily want that so yeah just like get a few pictures and kind of try and decipher like what you specifically want and what you like and don't like and then use the pictures to kind of communicate visually those things just a little bit of under eye concealer i use just like a tiny little dot of the nars soft matte concealer so yes i'm getting my hair done today but i also have some clients of my own so before my own appointment i have two clients one is coming in for a gloss and a haircut and then my second client is coming in for a haircut and then while my hair is processing my friend Haley is coming into the salon we're just gonna like tone it down a level and just do an all-over color in the bowl nice and easy but then that's it i don't have anything after that so then I can just finish getting my hair done and enjoy being a client. Let me show you my outfit. It's very simple, but 
like I said, tube top from Target. And then I'm wearing these jeans are from H&M. They're like the loose high-waisted jeans. And I'm just gonna wear my slinky platform sandals. Easy, comfy. Let's head to the salon. So, <laughs> it's the next morning. I literally just woke up. It's like seven in the morning. I haven't washed my face or anything, so I still got my skincare on if I look like greasy or anything. Disregard that. I didn't get many clips of the salon yesterday because it was just busy. Like it was packed in there. I don't like to set up my camera and record if there's a lot of other people because I don't want anyone to like be in the background and then feel like I know I could blur them out but like I don't want people to feel uncomfortably like I, why, I'm I'm on camera I'm in the background of this girl's video like what is she doing what, or, or the camera be in the way or anything like that you know so I was like mm. I thought I was going to be able to set up the tripod and like record a bunch and I just wasn't able to. So it's reason like 7,032 of why I can't wait to be in my own little studio. But um, this is how it looks. It's not what I was going for. By the time we finished my hair, it started pouring, like torrential downpour, rain outside. So I was like, don't even bother. Like I was her last appointment of the day. I was like, don't bother blow drying my hair because it's just gonna get wet when I go outside. And you know, when your hair's wet, it's going to look a lot darker no matter what, especially when it's like freshly done, freshly toned. So. I didn't really look at it too much at the salon and I know that like doing another hairstylist hair can be so annoying. Like hairstylists can be the worst clients because we know what we want, we know how we would do things and I try to not be, what's the word I'm looking for? Like super controlling and like micromanaging. I feel like if you're gonna sit there and tell somebody like, do it like this, like, okay, just do it yourself then, you know? So it's like, if I'm going to somebody else and I'm like, I'm booking an appointment, I'm paying for it like a client, I wanna be able to just sit back and relax and like, we'll do the consultation, I will explain what I want and show you pictures and then just trust you to just do your thing and I feel like I'm pretty easy going as long as it's like sort of within the ballpark of what I was looking for. So she did a full head of foils and then the hair that she left out between the foils, she put a dark color on to cover over the copper. The thing is, and like I wasn't really paying attention and again, like I don't want to nitpick somebody and tell them like, no, I don't like what you're doing. Like do it like this instead. I think that she just did thin highlights and didn't do anything like back to back so when you have a thin highlight another thin highlight and then you're leaving hair out in between that's gonna be dark the ratio especially on the ends you know it's always gonna look fuller up top than on the ends if you're just doing like one highlight so I feel like the highlights got lost on the ends in the dark color and then it's thicker and bolder at the Top. It's giving more high contrast. It's just, it's not what I was going for. So I'm trying to weigh out my options because I looked at the schedule and she is completely booked up until June. And I don't want to make her like stay late or come in on a day off or something like that. My other option would be do some research and maybe find another stylist whose work I like in this area and book an appointment. But I mean, this is like a busy time for hairstylists. So most likely, especially someone that's like really good, they're probably not gonna have any availability. And then it's gonna just cost even more money because then it's gonna be a color correction. And also it's gonna be another gamble because it's gonna be someone that like I don't know and have never like 
had them do my hair before or I could just fix it myself. And I don't want to seem like ungrateful or like talking down on anybody or anything like that. I really hope it doesn't come across that way. But it's just like, you know, when especially when you book an appointment and you're paying for it like a client and you're like really looking forward to it for a long time and then it's just not what you were wanting. It's like, ugh. My hair still feels really, really good though, so that's one good thing. Like, she used very low developer. I think she said she did like 10 and 15 volume. I just want to do a test strand first, just to see how this dark color will come out and make sure that I can still maintain the integrity. And then I need to look through the color that I have here. I know I have lightener and foils, like all that kind of stuff, but I... I need to check what toner I have. Oh, God bless me. I don't remember when I got this, but I have a full bottle of 9GI. Beautiful. I also have a f almost full bottle of 8V. And honestly, like I was saying yesterday, I'm also totally okay, especially for the summer. Like if I do end up having to cut a couple inches off, and do a little like jaw length cut like I had years ago. I think that's super cute and I'm fine with doing that if I need to. So even if there is a little bit of damage, whatever. I'm gonna do my test strand and then I will show you the results and keep you updated. Okay, we got the test strands in. I did one on each side on the bottom. Cause when she did my hair, she started in the back. So the foils sat on the longest in the back. So I feel like underneath here where she started would be a good place to do it because that'll really be a test to like see if there's damage. And also if there is damage, it's fine because it's the bottom most layer of my hair. So it'll be covered. I'll just keep checking on them periodically every like 15 minutes or so and see what ends up happening. Update, it's about 30 minutes later. I just checked the test strands and they're lifting pretty well and I pulled the lightener out of the ends and was feeling like the integrity of my hair and it still feels great the dark color completely just came out no problem at all which I was hoping it would so I'm just gonna do my whole head I'm not gonna record the process because I feel like that just ends up taking longer I am just gonna focus, take my time, and I will show you my hair after it's done. Doing another check-in. Here's how the hair is looking. I washed all the foils out. There's a little bit of damage because I was pulling each foil out one at a time and there were a couple, I wanna say maybe three foils where when I pulled them out and was like cleaning the lightener off with my fingers, I got a few strands of hair that came off with it but not a lot and literally like out of all the foils I did on my head it was literally only three and they were like very very thin so I don't think in the grand scheme of things it's gonna make a huge difference and it's nothing that some Olaplex and a little trim can't fix but yeah I shampooed everything out I put Olaplex number three in my hair I'm gonna just let this sit for an hour after this has been sitting for an hour i'm gonna rinse it out very gently comb out the teases that i did and then i'm gonna do a root tap and toner and a little trim and i will show you the finished hair once it's all done and dry and styled and all that are you ready for the big reveal done set it up I love it. It's so cute. I love the tone of it so much. It's just so like beachy and not too light. For the toner, I ended up doing mostly 9GI from Rick and Shades EQ with just a little tiny bit of the 8V. And then I did a root tap. I did 6NA with 4NCH because that was kind of all I had as far as darker colors, but I think that worked out pretty well. It like goes up pretty high, but it's like really soft and there's still my dark root. Here's how it looks from the back. 
Actually, I haven't even looked at the back yet. <laughs> oh my God, so good. Hello, good morning, it's Saturday. I was originally fully booked with two clients, like two big color and cut appointments, but my second one ended up canceling the other day, so I just have the one this morning, and she straight up told me that she has a lot of hair. So it'll probably take close to four hours, so it's not like, you know, just a quick, easy day necessarily, but at least because I only have her, I can take my time and hopefully get some good after pictures. So yeah, I will show you that process. Outfit is super, super easy and simple today. It is disgustingly humid and hot out. So I just wanna be comfortable. So I'm wearing this tank with a built-in bra from Primark, I wanna say. And then my good American jeans. I know you can't see them. But yeah, just some loose baggy jeans. So as you can see, my client had some old grown out highlights and the goal was to make her a lighter brown with a little bit of dimension. Originally, I was planning on just using a permanent color because we only needed to go a little bit lighter than what she was starting with. But when she told me that on her ends, she had like dark artificial color. I was a little nervous that just doing a permanent color wouldn't get us the lift and it wouldn't get us an even result that we needed. So I decided to go in with some bleach. I just did like open air lightning and then I did do a few like teased highlights in foil so that she would have a little bit of some lighter pops around the front. And then I just did a toner. This is what her hair looked like, just the raw lift. And then this was the final result. We also did a really dramatic haircut, added some curtain bangs and some shaggy layers. I wasn't able to get a good after clip because it was so humid outside and my lens kept fogging up. But here are some photos of what her hair looked like. It was so beautiful. I was super happy with the results. Hello, it is currently 9 30 and i'm trimming up my face frame pieces if you want to know how to do this yourself i will link a tutorial down below obviously they're not styled properly but now when i pull my hair up i just got these little pieces that are a little bit shorter but then when i wear it down i can still just like blend them right into the rest of my hair my client yesterday was so amazing she was a dream like fantastic so great to talk to. Her hair came out really beautiful, especially the cut. Normally, when someone comes in for a color and a cut, it's like the color is more so the focus. Most people just want like a little bit of a trim or you know, they'll like ask me to add some layers, but it's nothing like so dramatic. But this time around, it was like the haircut really stole the show. And I don't even think the pictures that I got did it justice in person. It just looked so good. And then when I got home, I worked on some website stuff a little bit more. And then today I was just home all day. Me and Betty went on a really nice long like hour walk and I got laundry done, cleaned the apartment and also got more website stuff done. It's been nice like just gradually working on the business because there really is a lot that I have to do. So I'm glad that I have the time and that I can just work on it gradually like take you know a couple hours here, a couple hours there. I'm just so excited though for it to all come together. I'm gonna end this vlog here though. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending another week with me make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already and i'll see you really soon in my next video bye